Good Monday morning. Well, last week we did what I told you I hate to do and not start at the end of a story, but we did. We um, kind of threw out this central piece of Joseph's story. And my prayer is that as we navigate this, that it will kind of stay on the forefront of your thoughts and your mind as we talk about his story. But number one, the truth that Romans 8, 28 is true, that God works all things together for good to them who love him and are called according to his purpose. Remember, that's a relationship verse. That's for those of us who are relationship with Jesus Christ. And second of all, that it is in order, as verse 29 says, for us to be made into the image of Jesus Christ. So whatever we travel through, God is working good in order for us to be transformed, which is true for anything that we travel through. And second, at the end of Joseph's story, when he encounters his brothers again, he says this to them. He says, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. Because that's how God works in the lives of his children. The enemy is a destroyer. We know this from John 10, 10, that thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. So we remember this as we enter the beginning of Joseph's story that begins like this in verse 37, chapter 37, verse 1. Jacob lived in the land of his father's sojournings in the land of Canaan, and these are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was pasturing the flock with his brothers. He was a boy with the sons of Billah and Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. So we know offhand he um, was willing to tell on his brothers. Um, and you can look at that a myriad of different ways. I'll let you choose. Um, so he's willing to bring a bad report about his brothers to his father. Okay? We know this about Joseph. Then it says, now this. Now Israel, Israel is Jacob. Remember when Jacob had the Jabbok experience. When Jacob finally surrendered Jacob to the Lord once and for all. God blessed him in a way that forever changed the very gate of his walk because it was represent, representative of the complete transformation where he would never be the same spiritually as well. God also changed his name and he said, no longer are you Jacob. Now you are Israel. Okay, so for all you history buffs, this is where the birth of Israel began. Abraham was given the promise, I'm going to make your seed more than the stars of the heaven, more than the sands of the sea. Finally, we get to Jacob, his grandson, and now God changes his name to Israel. And now he has given him 12 boys, which will become the 12 tribes of Israel, out of which the entire nation of Israel is born. But... Now, Israel loved J Joseph more than any of his other sons because he was a son of his old age. And he made him a robe of many colors. Okay, so already we're able to see that um, Jacob is not very wise still. He's still struggling with wisdom. Joseph, if you remember this in Jacob's story as we've traveled through Genesis, remember Jacob worked seven years for his father-in-law Laban because he wanted Rachel. And he wakes up the next morning from the wedding night and realizes it is not Rachel in the bed. It is Leah, who the Bible says she has weak eyes. Again, I'll let you decide what you think that means. So Joseph is the first child born from Rachel, the wife that he really wanted and desired from the beginning. So his heart for Joseph is showing favoritism to the point that with all his other boys, he's made Joseph a coat that is just another dart to their heart. And then it says this, but when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peacefully to him. So between Joseph's immaturity and naivete 
in Israel or Jacob's lack of wisdom, a perfect storm has brewed. Now, Proverbs says this in Proverbs 22, 3. It says, a prudent man sees the evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. So I want to, I'm going to read that. Bear with me if you will. I want to read that really quick from the ESV. It says, I like this better. The prudent see danger and they hide themselves, but the simple go on and suffer for it. Had Jacob in this season with these boys been a prudent man, he would have been able to discern the danger that could have happened in the setting up of Joseph's life and um, offering him up as the chosen one and what that would have done to his other boys, to their heart. But he didn't. He didn't hide himself. It says, but the simple go on. So the simple, they just push through. They push through wisdom. And they just go on. And scripture says, and they suffer for it. And much suffering, this very beginning of this story, sets up all the suffering that will occur. My prayer for us, may we be prudent able to see danger in advance, whether through our words, through our actions, through the relationships we entwine ourselves, through the agreements we make with the lies of the enemy. May we see danger and hide ourselves from it. May we not be simple and push through the wisdom or the discernment or the conviction that the Lord would bring or the wise counsel that the Lord would bring to our hearts and suffer the damage of it. Oh God, make us prudent and wise people in this day and age that so needs people of wisdom.